in the mid 20th century. Here in America, there were two young, very gifted evangelists. They came on the scene together. You know one of them very well, Billy Graham. His history is common knowledge. The other one you likely have not heard of. His name was Charles Templeton. Along with Billy Graham, Charles Templeton and another preacher by the name of Tory Johnson, whom I knew and for whom I preached when I was young, founded what is known as Youth for Christ to reach young people with the gospel. It was always said that Charles Templeton was the most gifted preacher. He was intelligent. He was irresistible in his personality. He was winsome. He was effective. He was handsome. In 1946, the National Association of Evangelicals gave an award out, a bizarre award, called Best Used by God. What a ridiculous thing. <laughs> As if they knew. And they gave it to Charles Templeton. He and Billy Graham began to preach together, and they were called the Gold Dust Twins. Charles Templeton overshadowed Billy Graham. He was more eloquent. He was more brilliant. He was a more polished orator. And the two of them went on a preaching tour to Europe. They went to England, Scotland, Ireland, Sweden, other places. They had a weekly television program that spanned the nation, CBS, NBC, through the 1950s. They were church planners. Charles Templeton was engaged in that. Charles Templeton became a pastor. He held youth rallies with thousands of people. He went to Princeton Seminary. He um, preached across the United States to crowds of 20,000 people. He preached for an entire week at Yale University. Charles Templeton. He was at the peak of his ministry in the 1950s when he announced that he was an agnostic, which is to say he doesn't know what he believes. He rejected Christ, he rejected the gospel, he rejected scripture. He read, he says in his biography, Thomas Paine, in 10 days beyond that he read Voltaire, Bertrand Russell, Robert Ingersoll, David Hume, and Algius Huxley a list of atheists. He abandoned all Christianity and all biblical truth, became a journalist in Canada. In 1999, he wrote a memoir on his life titled, Farewell to God. And in it, he listed his reasons for rejecting Christianity and becoming an atheist. He left all ministry at that point in 1957, returned to Canada, stepped into eternal blackness and apostasy, blasphemed Christ for his remaining years, and died in utter unbelief. Are there other preachers like him? Of course. Do we know that they're frauds? Not always, but this is how Satan works.